From trauma to joie de vivre, how is that possible? Welcome to Post-Trauma Secrets and Decluttering, where we go behind the scene and reveal how to free yourself. Come and discover the four dimensions of a decluttering journey with your host, Valerie Huar. Welcome to Post-Trauma Secrets and Decluttering Podcast. This is a season full of surprise. You will learn tons of story and information about a holistic decluttering journey, letting go of trauma and clutter, and taking back control of your life and home. This season is particularly special because I shared a mic with one of her extraordinary students. We had the chance to witness her amazing transformation, to see her take control of her life and find peace and joy. I'm so grateful that she accepted to interview me. As a church pastor, Reverend Cami was trusted by her congregation to take care for them in their darkest moment. As she cared for others, she was living in her own dark story. At the age of 30, she was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD and found coping with life's simplest task was becoming difficult and taking more and more of her energy. She decided that nothing was going to take her life from her and began a journey of recovery and created life that is thriving. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Valerie. Thank you for that introduction. Oh, it's a pleasure. Valerie, reflecting on our previous discussion, Valerie, you beautifully illustrated your journey from confronting personal challenges to empowering others through the Doers Academy. Your stories and insights are enlightening and inspiring to many, including myself, who are battling their own clutter and trauma. As we delve deeper into your experience and wisdom, I would like to explore a few more aspects of your approach to decluttering and dealing with trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder. Does the core process at Do Well work for everyone? How was it discovered and developed? Oh my God, Tammy, that's such an important question. The core process at Do Well can work for everyone, but there's a little caveat here. It is not a one-size-fits-all solution. We call it the holistic decluttering process. Each individual is unique and may require different approaches to decluttering and dealing with trauma. However, the four step of the journey, of the holistic decluttering journey, like reducing the stress, clearing the mental fog, optimizing time, and eliminating physical clutter, they serve as the foundation for guiding individual. So what I mean by that, it's really like Somebody can arrive and work a certain period of time on stress because their level of cortisol is really, really high. And then they arrive in mindset and it's an easy step for them and they go really fast in it. Another person can already be doing meditation or a different strategy to release the stress. So the stress time on, in the program will be shorter. But that individual may be, may be needed of more of the mindset section. So everybody goes at its own rhythm, but it's the same process for everyone because we really need to reduce the stress to be able to have those executive function in our, in our brain, you know, the one about planning, organizing, sorting, making decision to be enhanced. And from there, we can start making decision and thinking about what we want. That's the mindset section. When that mindset section is done, the third step is about time. So optimizing time or having habits and routines so it's easier. And then we get into the simplify your living space or decluttering the area. But as well, in that section, we will have different approach of decluttering. Because it's not everybody that has the exact same clutter at the exact same place in their house. Some people will mm -hmm. clutter more clothes, another person will clutter more books. So it's really depending. So we follow the process, we support everyone, but it's at their own rhythm. 
the second part of the question, you know, is really like we discovered it by seeing a lot of clients decluttered and they were still feeling awful. Like they had a professional organizer coming home, they declutter, but they were still feeling uh, in their home afterwards. Mm -hmm. They were overwhelmed and the clutter was coming back really fast, like a question mm -hmm. of week or two. So we have tested and incorporated all the best tips and tools to end up with the current process. So it is something that has been developed on multiple years to become what it is right now. And right now, it's really what we found that is working the best with most of our clients. What is the magic behind the holistic decluttering incorporated in this methodology? And how does it compare to other approaches? So the power of holistic decluttering lies in its comprehensive and all-encompassing approach. It goes beyond addressing physical clutter and delve into mental and emotional clutter, often overlooked in traditional method. By tackling both tangible and intangible aspects of the individual can achieve a more profound transformation, just like you experience. And that is why it is called holistic. It treats life and clutter as a whole synergistically uh, system. And interestingly, while developing our method, we discovered a parallel concept that is called Medicine 3.0. I don't know if you heard about it, but it's a principle by Peter Atia. And the Medicine 3.0 principle advocates for a holistic medicinal approach to patient, same as the holistic decluttering process. It's not the traditional uh, Western medicine only. It's not the traditional Eastern medicine, it's something that incorporates most of them together, and it's called the Medicine 3.0. Medicine 3.0. So what's the deal with the core process? What are the high level explanations and the tangible benefits? I'm really curious to know that. So the unique construction of these methods provide the sole means of navigating a highly overwhelmed and stressed mental state. So what I mean by that is really like people that get into a program or need or approach are really the people that look at their home, they open the door and it's kind of, oh my God, that's so overwhelming. I have so much things to do. Or they're sitting on their couch, either scrolling on their phone or playing a game, and it's kind of, I'm overwhelmed by all that clutter. I know I should be doing my decluttering, but I'm not able. I don't know where to start. And it's just too overwhelming. It makes me really tired and have physical pain. Mm -hmm. And so this is the state where people arrive. And that is because of the trauma and also because of the amount of clutter. Through the development of stress reduction strategy. So by having people practice those strategy daily, what we observe is the majority of the individual instinctively resume their activities and embark on a long awaited project, often without consciously considering it. So I'll give you some example. Like the, when the frontal lobe is kicking in, you know, it's like people go to the mail and instead of putting it on the countertop, they kind of sort it right away. And they tell me in the call, you know what? I sort the mail today. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> or mm -hmm. I feel that urge of doing my closet. I was absolutely needing to do my shoes and my closet. And I did it. It takes three hours, but I did it. Or they arrive on a call and it's kind of really like, oh my God, I always wanted to have my deck outside clear of clutter. This is what I will tackle. And it may take a couple of weeks to tackle, but they arrive with that project that was in the back of their mind and now they're ready to do it. They're ready to tackle it. Oh, that sounds wonderful. 
How is this process tailored or adjusted for different programs or individuals within DoWell? Is it a continuous process or a one-time effort? Oh, that's a really good question. So the core of the process is continuously evolving and tailored to fit individual needs within the DoWell program. Okay, so for those struggling with trauma and PTSD, there's additional techniques such as mindfulness and grounding and exercise that are incorporated. And this is an ongoing journey. So it will really help people maintain balance and inner tran tranquility. It requires consistent effort. Okay, everybody knows it. The clutter accumulated during years won't go on a snap. So it needs consistent effort and adaptation to confront these new challenges that life can bring you even if you're on a decluttering journey and the goals in their lives. So for example, it happened that someone in the program lost a loved one while on the program. Mm -hmm. So we support mm -hmm. them and help them pass through that new situation and merge that into their transformation that they're living through the journey. Or someone may add an accident and broke a leg or needed a knee replacement or add a high surgery. So there's lots of different things that life can throw at people while they're on the program because her program is about a year program. So life continues. But the beauty of it is in the group, we have people at each of the step of the journey. So by having people at each step, mm -hmm. people always see, oh, this is what's coming next for me. And that brings hope to the people and encouragement and motivation. And hope is exactly what we need when we're working on our traumas. Can you share the journey of discovering and developing this core process and how it became part of Do Well's programs? Oh, that's a really good question. So the discovery and development of the core process was a result of my personal journey with decluttering and healing from trauma. Addressing underlying factors mm -hmm. such as stress, mental clutter is crucial for achieving long-lasting results. So the four-step journey of holistic decluttering emerged as a comprehensive, effective approach to research, trial, and error, and working with clients. So I can give you a, an example right here of working with client. Let's say I'll call this client Bill or Bob, Bill or Bob. And then one day I arrive at its place and I knock at the door of his apartment and I get no answer. So I took my phone and I look at the schedule. I'm at the right place. It's the right time. The client is Bill. It's really him. So it's the right apartment in the building. Yes, I'm at the right place. So let's knock again. And then I hear movement inside the home. So I wait. Nothing. Okay, what do I do? Do I go back? Is it a cancel? Is the client shy? Is the client afraid of me? Because with trauma, sometimes we have difficulty with trust. So I knocked again and I named who I was and that I was here to help. And finally, the door opened by about an inch or two. And then I saw through the door that there were feet of clutter. In fact, the door was not opening a lot. So Bill finally opened the door after talking with me by about, let's say, a foot, okay? But listen to that, okay? And visualize it. A six feet tall, really muscle-builded gentleman squeeze himself in that oh. one feet mm. of the door and get out of the apartment to talk with me. And then I'm looking at him and he's taller than me and bigger than me. And I'm looking at the door and it's kind of, I can never fit through that place. I can never squeeze in. Or if I squeeze in, I'm not able to squeeze out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
I decided to talk <laughs> with him and it's kind of, we decided that he will be inside and I will be outside and I will guide him decluttering. Yes. So it started that way. Mm. So that same day, I passed him a pair of gloves. I started the diffuser in the uh, hallway over there. And he start with the pile in front of him. That was a pile of newspaper. The first newspaper took maybe almost 10 minutes before he gave it to me. He was not able to part and let it go to the recycling because it was knowledge and he didn't want to throw out knowledge. So mm -hmm. talking with him, progressively I get to know him and we figure out that maybe he can let go of the Monday to Friday newspaper and keep the Saturday, Sunday that has the special uh, booklet in them. So at the end of the mm -hmm. meeting that day, he was able to let go of really a lot of clutter and the door was opening more. But I'm talking about him because it's how people arrive and sometimes they're afraid and sometimes their mental clutter is really overwhelming and they are ashamed and they are mistrust. And how with our approach that is in four step, like the first time I started with the step number four, directly the decluttering with Bill. And when I came back a couple of weeks after, it was cluttered again. So I learned that that step cannot be the first one. And then we discovered mm. the link with the cortisol. So we started by tackling the stress. So this is working with client like that, that when I work on the stress for a couple of weeks with Bill, and then we did his decluttering session, the next time I came, he was able to maintain what was decluttered. So, and I'm just naming one example that of client, but with client after client and observing that, this is how we come with really a program that is empowering individual with tools and techniques for transforming their life holistically. So we really believe that clutter and trauma are interconnected and by addressing them together through our core process, we can really make a meaningful impact. Valerie, that is absolutely amazing. You have just done such a wonderful job and creatively working with each individual and helping them. It's Thank you. just amazing. How has the methodology evolved over time and what inspires its ongoing refinement? Yeah, so like I just say with the experience of Bill, you know, we add multiple clients and continuous research and learning. And as we work with individuals from diverse backgrounds, you know, sometimes we have maybe someone from the First Nation, or maybe someone we have someone that lives in a different part of the country and culture is different. So we adapt and refine our approach depending on the circumstances. And also, all our individual arrive with diverse background. They encounter different challenges and circumstances. So it requires us to adapt for them. So with that ongoing refinement that is inspired by our commitment to consistently provide the best tool and techniques for addressing clutter and trauma holistically, this is how we come with that. And we're always seeking new knowledge and techniques, you know, to enhance our methodology and ultimately benefi benefiting those who seek our service. Like right now, I'm still doing course at university to be sure to stay really up to date with the knowledge of what's happening in the trauma area. So did I understand you correctly? You s continue your education so that you I can do. continue to help others. Yes. Wonderful. I do. As we now understand the evolution of your methodology is encompassed in the Do Well programs, could you please elaborate on your program and how it has reached its current state? Additionally, what insights 
can viewers anticipate? Oh, that's a big question. So let's break it down. <laughs> so our do okay. program offers a holistic approach to decluttering and overcoming trauma. That's our basis, okay? And with that, we incorporate our core process with techniques such as mindfulness, grounding exercise, stress reduction strategy, hydrotherapy, lots of different things. And we build a program that we call the Doers Academy. And in this program, individuals are receiving personalized support and guidance from our experienced team. So there's tools and resources that are provided in a platform to help them on their journey towards balance and inner tranquility. But our program also evolved through clients' feedback and our continuous learning. So it's a comprehensive and effective solution for decluttering and healing from trauma. Viewers can gain, or people that are listening to us today, they can gain valuable insight into transforming their life by addressing both physical and mental clutter holistically. And you know what? This leads to inner peace and happiness. It so, certainly does. Yeah, <laughs> and you're a real proof of it. So thank you so much, Tammy, for that incredible interview. Stay tuned as this is just the beginning of the season. We're just at episode two in this season. And if you like that episode, please leave us a review, subscribe to the podcast. And next episode, we will dive more into stress and its impact in our lives. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to this episode. If you want to help break the trauma stigma, share this episode and give hope to your friends and let them know it is possible to get free from trauma. Valerie and JM want to help you further by offering you Declutter Your Life 101. Be sure to go to dowellht.com forward slash free yourself. That's dowellht.com forward slash free yourself to get your free quick summary and start your decluttering journey. Thanks again for tuning in and be sure to join us next time to discover another secret on post-trauma secrets and decluttering.